Coming up, we're going to be talking about our favorite Disney movies and then some in this episode of Diz Pop. Diz Pop is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts in helping you plan the perfect vacation. Visit them on the web at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Well, hello, everybody. I am your host, Rhino Clavin, and in this episode of Diz Pop, I am joined by none other than the Siskel to my Ebert, Craig Williams. Oh, hello. Thank you. At this point, we might as well just be co-hosts on this, too. Ah, uh, you know, it, yeah. Honestly, it really should be. But I, then it, it, it like... I feel like as soon as I say co-host, you're contractually obligated. Yeah, and that's a problem. Like That's what happened. Uh, last week, you put out an awesome review of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And as we stood outside the movie theater discussing, well, should we do it now? Should we? Should, what should yeah. we do? I was able to say, you know what? It is almost I 11 o'clock. Home, yeah. I want to go home. <laughs> yeah. So that is that is the good part about not being your co-host. It is. Thank yeah. You. I don't want to feel. I don't want to rope anybody into something they don't want to do. So yeah, I believe that's illegal in many states. Yes. Yes. Well, um, I I was thinking about what should we do this week, and you know what? We never have really sat and had the discussion about what our favorite. Disney movies are. Now, there's going to be a little asterisk here, because I didn't want to just say Disney movies, and I didn't just want to be like, this is our favorite Disney movie. It's kind of movies that have resonated with us over the years, in our developmental years. Exactly. So, the the classic tale of uh, mom sat us in front of the TV because she didn't want to watch us as kids, and put on a variety of entertainment yeah. with Disney, uh, Disney and, and more, you know, obviously it's, there are, we did not just get stuck in a Disney bubble, yeah. but some of those things have lived on with us still to this day that we have that affection for. Well, and some of them are even in that same realm of a Disney movie. They're yeah. just made by another studio. You know what I mean? They have those same kind of values that are present, but yeah. they're not there, but um, so here's how we're going to break it down. We're mm. going to do our favorite for Disney movies. We're going to do favorite live action, favorite animated, and then favorite Pixar, favorite Marvel now, and favorite Star Wars. Yeah. So we're going to do one from every sector of the movie studio. That way we don't have to, uh, you know, we're not, you know, we're broadening the scope exactly. a little bit. So. And obviously the Marvel ones came out after we were already adults. So yeah, there, there's so a little there, asterisk on that one. Too, yeah, that, that one's more like I got to throw it in because we're going to talk about the other ones, but... Uh, they're not going to have the same emotional weight as yeah, exactly. some of these other ones exactly. are because there's going to be some surprise choices along the way here, I think. And so you got to pick one for each category and maybe tell a little, tell us a little bit about why. Okay. So um, let's just start. I'm going to start with the live action okay. here. Okay. So my favorite live action Disney movie, anybody ask me, Mary Poppins. Oh, that's, a, that's an absolute great one. If we were doing this list today... That would actually probably be mine, but oh, as an adult, you're, as, yeah, your as, adult a, as yeah. an adult, my favorite live action would be Mary Poppins. But um, I, this was one that well, while don't I'm say sure, yours yet. Don't say I, yours. I'm not. Okay. I'm, while while I'm sure that I watched it as a kid, um, it didn't have that impact on oh, me while really? I was growing up. You don't yeah, think no, you I watched it remember. when you were younger? As I, much? I I kn I know I watched it a little bit. I, I'm thinking I don't have any distinct memories of watching it. Whereas like. I, I can remember being at my grandparents' house and having on uh, The Sound of Music, specifically the Lonely Goat Herd scene, mm. and like that resonates for me. See, in that's terms one of that I, Andrews, didn't, I never but, saw that when I was yeah, younger. But, I still haven't actually yeah. even seen it all the way you, through you, as an adult. You need to watch it. I know. I've, I own it. I own it. I've got it. I, I've, I've gotten about halfway through. It is also one of those movies, too, where I think I'm trying to savor it as I yeah. go through. So I've made to intermission repeatedly. I just, I, I'm afraid to move forward. You, you, know, but. you just don't like movies with Nazis. I, the Nazis. Um, that's not true because I love Indiana Jones. Um, but uh, for me, my mom actually has on VHS, um, and uh, this footage will never surface in the real world, has me uh, in my diaper pretty much. Um, and I have my brother who's a year older than me, and she's got a video of me singing Jolly Holiday with Mary. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, in that scene, I made my brother be Mary. And so I was – I was uh, I was – um, I was Dick Van Dyke, um, Bert, and we, I'm reenacting the, uh, the scene, like, uh, so we didn't have an umbrella or anything like that. It was, it, and we, I don't know 
how old I was. I mean, I'm in a diaper. God, I hope I'm young. But um, I am... No, I was just thinking, you were a poor family. You did not have an umbrella. No, we, yeah, we were. The umbrella was a two-by-four. It was a piece of wood I had discovered somewhere in the... Like, clearly, it's a lot of safety going on. I might not even be in a diaper. I might just be in my underwear. But the the I am doing the scene where they're on the animated turtles. So yeah. I'm stepping and like, whoa, got to balance. And... Uh, God bless my brother, who was just holding my hand, like, like so angry because this is clearly like it was like a routine of mine that we had done. Um, but he always played along with me, so I used to do the whole like you get down on the one knee and it's a you know it's a jolly holiday. Yeah. And then I'd reenact the different animals. Mary makes your sunshine, right? <laughs> like, that's not the same part, but. Um, there's just a lot, and I feel like we kept watching as we got older, and now that I'm older, I appreciate even more about that movie. It's like what you said. You become an adult, and you kind of realize there was this whole feat of movie-making spectacle that yeah. I didn't even realize as a child, you know? Um, and, you know, growing up watching Nick at Night, Dick Van Dyke is a big presence in my house. We used to watch a, um, there's another one. He was he had a monkey on a submarine. Sergeant. It was. Um, oh, my gosh. I it was Lieutenant, it. Lieutenant Robinson Caruso. Yes, yeah, yes. that's right. We we always loved any of the Robinson, uh, any of those Robinson stories, which I will get to later. But, but yeah, the music on that that dark those those lower notes it takes right before chim chim yep. chim tree whatever. Um, I don't know. They give they there's a feeling when you're watching this movie, you hear that music that almost triggers your childhood. You you can almost feel like you're a kid again. Yeah. What's one for you? What's your live action one that does that? Oh, my. Oh, it, see, this is a really, really tough one. Um, uh, because I, I actually was fortunate enough to, to see a lot of the, um, the late 50s and early 60s Disney movies while I was growing up. And um, yeah, no, I, I have a lot of good memories of it, like seeing Pollyanna. I know Teresa, okay. Teresa would be happy no, to fun, hear that. No, fun fact, too, because Teresa said Pollyanna the other, and I wanted to bring it up. So a lot of, again, we you know, not a lot of money. We recorded a lot of stuff off yep. of TV. There must have been a Disney movie. I don't know what it was, but it had the preview for Pollyanna. So I've never seen Pollyanna, but I have seen the trailer for Pollyanna hundreds of times in my life, along with there was a movie with John Cusack about a wolf. The Adventures of Natty, Natty Gun, Natty Gun, Natty, Natty, Natty uh, maybe Natty Gun. I'm, I believe I've heard this before. Um, I don't yeah. want to be terrible right well, now. Well, but... we used to watch that. I, I have actually watched that movie though too. But yeah. I, I, I don't know what tape that was. But when I was a kid, I used to love movie trailers because they were on the beginning of these whatever. So it was yeah. just a really interesting, an obscure Disney movie too, of all things. I'm gonna look that up while you you go on. And okay. Tell us. Well, yeah. So I I was fortunate to see a lot of those, um, like Pollyanna, The Parent Trap, um, Swiss Family Robinson, along with um, along with Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea. But I think actually the one that kind of resonated the most in and it's still something that I've watched very recently and, and still have um, – just still have a the lot of – Journey of Natty Gan. Sorry. There you go. Go ahead. It's just right as I get to my climax. Um, the one that definitely still resonates the most with me today, not, not my favorite Disney live-action movie at all um, – it's actually fallen down very far in the list, but the one that was like with me that had such a big impact on me growing up uh, has to be Old Yeller. The oh, story of, yeah. The story of a boy and his dog, and how he has to shoot his dog. God, I was, I, I you know, I was actually thinking about this movie a couple of days ago because I'm just thinking about how heart wrenching that ending is, and like. I think as an adult watching that movie now, I'm just going to be destroyed. Yeah, it's actually it's it's one of those movies that actually gets tougher the older you get. And now, like now, the fact that I have my own dog, just thinking yeah. about that, it's like, oh no, 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 I could not do that. I mean, well, while I was watching it though, I wanted to kill my dog because anytime a dog comes on screen, he jumps at the TV and <laughs> tries to attack it. So of course, I wanted to shoot him then. But then after the movie, I'm like, no. No, I love animals. So that is uh, that's a good that's a good like I, I, one of those like classic Disney movies that I don't know that people are showing it to the next generation. You know what I mean? 
Uh, and it has been on Netflix. Um, I want to say they took it back off, but I could be incorrect on that. But it's not like it's been completely inaccessible. Um, it was released on DVD. It's been on Netflix. It was part of the Walt Disney Treasures. Yeah. Uh, Treasures from the Disney Vault, sorry, that they show on TCM every quarter. So, they, you know, it, it's been out there. And it's something that... Uh, that I think actually in terms of Walt Disney's live action movies, this is one that plays really well because, you know, it is the story of a boy and a dog. And it's it's just, it's really good for the that younger age range. Them yeah. Then, oh, God. I'm going to start crying just thinking about this movie. You know what other movie did that to me when I was a kid? The Fox and the Hound. I hate the end of The Fox and the Hound. Oh, I know. Like, I hate the end of the Old Yeller, but Old Yeller saved their life, and that's why he got the rabies and he had to be put down. But... Like, oh, I'm going to start crying. Todd the and fox Clapper. and the hound. The Why all... can't they be friends? Why can't they just get we'll over all... their differences? We'll always be friends forever, right? Oh, no. God. no. Yeah, I know. And then I, I, the first time I saw that as a kid, I just went upstairs and cried for two hours afterwards. I was like, I'm never watching this movie again. I don't think I have either since then. But yeah, I watch it very, very often. Actually, it's it's one of my it's I'm one of my hound favorite dog. ones too. <laughs> I'm a hound dog. Woo. I, uh, it breaks my heart. I can't do it. I can't do it. And I know that's the whole message of the movie, but it's just, oh, gosh. Well, my favorite animated movie, since we're in that route, that world now, is The Lion King. Hmm. Um, I remember going to see this in the movie theater way back in 1994. Yeah, um, I do, too. And... There's just something about it. Like I love all the colors. I, I love I love the um, the animation in it. Is right in that prime sweet spot of that for like when we were kids. Like that's our generation of Disney animation. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, no, it's I, I agree with the with the Disney Renaissance. It you know it, that's when things got thrust back forward. I feel like when it was perfected was with the lion king yeah even though the little mermaid and well, it was Beauty like it and was the leading up to it yeah. yeah with that you couldn't you know they those are great stepping stones and then the lion king was the one that they just thought was a, a throwaway movie essentially and i think it is the shining example of that era i it's just it's it's dark but it's 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 just tr it's very the music is great like i said the animation is yeah. great it's just it, there's a lot of breathtaking stuff in that movie and i it just kind of always stuck with me like there is like i you know i love the music of aladdin you love the music of yeah. little mermaid beauty and the beast but there's just something about even when i was a kid like i knew that music like it just it it echoes through you and like I love, you know, years later I'd learn it's Matthew Broderick's voice of, of, yeah. of adult Simba, and I love him, and who didn't love JTT when we were kids, and, you exactly. know, and, and, like, Jeremy Irons, a scar, it's just a lot of really Nathan James Earl Lane. Jones, named Nathan Lane, it's just, it's, it's crazy, I don't know, it's just one of those where I, I, I agree with you, I think it is, like, the perfection of that era of animation, yeah. um, then I, you know, grow up going to high school, you have to read Shakespeare, and, Hamlet was always my favorite story. So then when we get to, like, then I realize, like, freaking Hamlet and the Lion King are the, like, phew, my yeah. mind is blown. You know what I mean? No, the, the Lion King is, I, I think that for me, since I was born a couple years later than you, um, that was, like, the first prime example of, like, a, a Disney Renaissance movie for me. Like, I remember seeing Aladdin in theaters. Yeah, I remember seeing that. I, I absolutely have memories of that. I, a little and it was bit fun. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. That was a fun movie. You yeah, know? No, no, absolutely. But Lion King was where it all changed. And that's also where I realized, like, that we also did have a problem, like, my family in terms of Disney, because I remember that one of my aunts took us to see it. Uh, like we, of course, we had the soundtrack and everything, so we're singing the songs before and we're you getting even the, seen it. And the, well, no, we had already seen it. Oh, okay. So okay. it was like one of our extra viewings. So between listening to the soundtrack, seeing the movie already, yeah, then we got those like stairs, like okay, this is <laughs> this is not normal, and so it's. It, like, I don't know why that sticks out for me. I guess because you don't actually suppress embarrassing moments. You really yeah. just latch onto oh, it no. forever. But so for me, that's like, that's that exact same thing. And it is my favorite. It is my favorite Disney Renaissance movie for sure. My favorite Disney uh, animated. original animated one would. Now, if you ask me on any given day, the answer I'd give you is Pinocchio. But Oh, really? But 
that's I. It's, I've just I've learned to appreciate it more and more over the years. I think the animation is so beautifully stunning. Uh, having when you wish upon a star is mm-hmm. the theme song in there. Just everything about that movie works perfectly. But I have to go with my favorite animated movie being the one with the character that is like the most near and dear to me, and that would actually be Dumbo. I oh really? Okay. I, Love Dumbo. I, I collect Dumbo I didn't things. Know that. So I, you know, at home I still have one of my Dumbo plushes from when I came to Disney World as a kid. I have my Dumbo popcorn bucket. I have some Dumbo figures and statues. I and a, I, I love Dumbo. I have really strong memories of watching Dumbo as well, and it's specifically like my grandparents' bedroom. Like, so you like go upstairs, and they had a big TV, and under that TV had like a. That's where all the VHSs yeah. were, and I, I don't. I don't know that it was an authorized copy of Dumbo, <laughs> but it well, you had Dumbo up there, and I remember you used to always playing it. Do you remember the opening? It had that neon Mickey, it, it, like my yeah, VHS that did intro, that, yeah. that Mickey yeah. intro, yeah. yeah. And Dumbo used to just be very. I I think I was a little bit afraid of Dumbo because the Pink Elephant song. Yeah. I was I did not know what was going on, and I remember being very unsettled by it. Yeah, no, between Pink Elephants and then, you know, as a kid, you can't. You don't have a lot of sad moments, but uh, oh, with yeah. like Baby Mine, that is like something that a kid can actually relate to, yeah. especially a, a a young boy thinking that they're being closed off from their mother. Yeah, um, not to be too Norman Bates or or, <laughs> or Buster Bluth. Um, <laughs> not, neither of those, but it's it's that idea that that is something that a child can latch onto, and so there there are those darker elements to that movie, but I. I just absolutely love it. It's a nice short Disney movie too. Yeah. Um, you know, it's only it's only like seventy something minutes, so you can really well, zip by it fast as a yeah. kid. And it's a fascinating movie about its time too. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it clearly is very reflective of when it was made because you've got the crows. Oh, and yeah, the, no, it's you know, and it, it it's one of those. I, I don't know. Yeah. It, it is. It is. I don't know. Yeah, I have that no. strong feeling toward it's it too. A, you know? And it's one of those ones that it's again, even though it's not my favorite. Like, well, it is. It's basically my favorite one that has transcended from being a kid all the way to now. Um, but it's, it's the one it's you just, want to bond with your it's, kid over. It's the one that I I would be excited about. The other one for me too, and that it's it's just to mention it would be Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs because that was always that was my sick day movie. So hmm. when I was, uh, well, let's be honest, kids sometimes just don't want to go to school, and <laughs> um, that was one that I would always put on when I had sick days, and I w- I would just watch it. I don't I something about those older. Disney movies, the the originals with Walt overseeing them. Th- something about that just has a different energy to me, and I feel like they they attached more to me as a kid even than the Renaissance ones did, despite being able to see them for the first time. But I'm I'm weird. My sick day movie is Drive Me Crazy, starring Melissa Joan Hart. Oh, I <laughs> actually I, I'm sure I had that on DVD. Oh, I have it on DVD. It is still my sick day movie, so it's fine. I have a weird love of melissa joan hart that will never die um entourage well well, let's entourage um (laughs) let's move forward a little bit into the pixar realm i used to play this game all the time with like what's your favorite you got to pick the three and now we've got the family of five here but um for uh, i mean in terms of studio division but for me it's an easy one it's toy story I, i mean essentially this could it's just a movie that like i remember seeing it in the movie theater and I don't even know that I was aware necessarily that it was a new type of animation. I thought yeah. I was just watching a movie. You know what I mean? And I just remember it was really funny. And it's one of those movies that I, I love a movie that like my mom will also really love and be excited about us seeing. Like there's been a couple in my life very specifically like I for some reason my mom saw the Santa Claus before we saw it. And then the Tim Allen movie, and then she took us to see it because she was like, you kids got to see this movie. It's so funny. Yeah. And and so – my mom also has the same excitement and joy of Toy Story for me. So, like, I remember she knew I loved it. So um, Burger King, I think it was Burger King. It might have been McDonald's, but I'm pretty sure it was Burger King. Had these. It was Burger King. It wasn't the Happy Meal toys but, or the whatever their version yeah. of that is. It was the, like, you could buy them separately. So you could get a Buzz, a Woody, and an RC. Yeah. And she was, I was like, well, I you're RC. RC. And so – she searched really, you know, for a long time, and we didn't think we'd complete the set. And she one day just – 
you know, and like I said, we didn't have a lot of money growing up. My mom was a single mom with a, you know, several kids. And it, it, I, so these random surprise toys like this yeah. were really special. And I just remember her, like, I, I got the buzz and like putting them all together. And I kept them on my like nightstand until we moved in like 2003, 2004 into how she lives in now. And I still have them in storage somewhere, but like, I don't know. It's, it's, I have that warm memory to it, but also like years later you go on to learn like, oh, I loved Buffy growing up. Then I find out like Joss Whedon was really a big, you know, a, a writer. hand in the yeah. writer of that movie. And so like that humor, I understand where that appeals to me. And honestly, I think that humor from Toy Story was, I grew up, adopting some of that yeah. sarcastic humor you know so i don't know for me it's it's that also i can always watch that movie and i just appreciate how tight and it is and how everything comes around and it's both hilarious and sad and mrs nesbitt come on yeah no i don't you see the hat don't you get it that's my favorite part as an I adult know. now no it, it is it's such a good part that that's what kylie wants our if we end up going to the half marathon in Disneyland, that's going to be Toy Story related. Oh my God! She You're wants to do, do. Mrs. Nesbitt. Yeah. Yeah, oh my what, gosh! That's what she wants. So we'll see if that happens. Um, you know, I I've talked about before in this pop and other things that I Pixar is very difficult for me, um, and it's it's very hard because they don't make bad movies really. Right, yeah, well, when, exactly. When Cars Two is the example of a bad movie that you've made, which really isn't that awful that's that's where it's it gets really difficult well you got to um, find the emotional connection because for me toy story we were still kids it was 1995 so yeah. like you know yeah i mean there was bug's life after then toy story 2 right that it was like one two it was two, yeah it was toy after. story then a bug's life then toy story 2 okay then monsters inc and then i remember going to see Nemo. toy story 2 again yeah, yeah so it's like we were i don't know these are movies we it's like we aged with the studio. So yeah. the studio was brand new and like we were like buddies, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I I can remember, you know, I can remember seeing a lot of them. I remember seeing uh cars at the at the drive in, like one oh, of the wow. first movies In that a I car, could watch yeah, in a car. You know, that's it's that was pretty pretty awesome having that. I remember seeing Ratatouille and starting to think that like, oh my gosh, this Pixar really is something special, and yeah. then and then comes Wally, and that's like, okay, yeah. this this is like serious works of art, and then Up, which is probably you know it's 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 the movie that if Kylie and I were to say like one movie that would define our whole relationship as a whole, the one thing that we would go back to, it would it would always be Up. But well, that sounds sad. I, no, not in that way. I know, it's, I know, but it, it's just everything the quotes, the music, ev just everything works with it. But I actually have to agree with you on this one, too. As difficult as it is, um, Toy Story, I just I, I remember seeing it in theaters, too, yeah. being blown away. I remember my Burger King toy from that, too, yeah. as well. Um, I, I just everything about it. I remember just burning out that VHS copy of it. Yep, yep, I yep. remember I remember getting the VHS like well, going and you're like twenty dollars. Like. And I, I can even I can even remember at the first house that I grew up in, uh we had a finished basement and that's where I eventually moved in down there, but that's where I'd watch movies and stuff. And I can remember sitting watching just like right up in front of the T V with one of my Disney World popcorn buckets that then I popped all my popcorn in and put it in there. So I had this like little Disney movie moment. Yeah. And there's just, and then I remember when it was, uh, when they re released Toy Story 1 and 2 in uh, theaters for 3D. And there was only one theater that was about an hour away from us. Uh, and my mom, thankfully, she took me to that. I mean, this was already almost bored it teenage years yeah right when they did this so it's not like it's not like this little kid getting to experience it again it was it was me getting to fall back in love with these movies that i kind of have fallen out of touch in and sitting there through that double feature where she put up with you know over almost four hours of toy story with me that's just like it's stuff like that that i will never ever forget well, you know what's funny is the, the more we've had this conversation about toy story like i know we'll move on in a second but it's like because we were we were andy yeah when we saw it the first time but now we're not we're i mean i know andy's in college but like we're 
like when we were kids, I don't know. It was one of those things where I was like, maybe my toys are coming alive. But now we're we're on the other side of that like Santa Claus effect. You know what yeah, I mean? And yeah. it's just kind of this crazy like it's just as good to look back in that same effect. So this is almost a movie that encapsulates our imagination as children, you know. I, I can already promise you, on the way home from this, I will be <laughs> listening to Randy Newman and belting out. I like the... books, tiny book. <laughs> exactly, you, you got it. <laughs> Song from Toy Story. Um, well, well, let's move into then Star Wars, which originally mm. was not part of the Disney family, but is now part of the Disney family. Um, I'm going to do Star Wars before Marvel, only because Star Wars the movies reach further back, obviously. Yeah. Um, so I know it's like pick your favorite one. The Empire Strikes Back for me is obviously, or, or maybe even The Force Awakens is one of those two for me are my favorite one. But the one I have the most emotional connection to is like again when I said my family is like the the like comes from some VHS like kingdom or something like that. It was just everything was VHS. It's recorded off TV. V, we had the VHS video camera. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, like it's just so. My first connection to Star Wars came from the Ewok, uh, the Caravan of Courage, I believe, is the yes. uh, is the first one. Yeah, and it I didn't know I had never seen the Star Wars movies until they released them on VHS uh, in like ninety five, ninety six, some right before they were re released in the movie theater. For the special editions, they came out on normal, uh, like they were released on VHS before that. It was a silver Darth Vader box that then for the special edition became a gold Darth Vader box or whatever. But anyway, so I didn't see them till I was in like fifth grade. But I grew up watching this Ewok movie. Um, it was, um, it was actually the silver and gold. They were both the same set. It was just one was widescreen and the other was oh. um, full screen. Oh, then so I'm, I'm getting it mixed then up. Then they did have a VHS release before. For that as well too, that was still the original ones. But once the special edition came out, also really I, I am talking about the wrong Ewok movie. Caravan of Courage is the sequel, which I did not see very much. The babysitter had that on VHS. She got from Max Movies in my hometown of Carver, Massachusetts. That's my chair. Just yeah. made a really <laughs> weird noise. Um, but the Ewok Adventure, which came out in 1984, um, and I remember this just like Mace Wicket, like. Uh, uh Sindel. okay yeah um and just they're on this adventure and it's probably a terrible movie but like it it's we my we had this i had this one toy gun that was like a little broken but my mom took like duct tape or uh, electrical tape and wrapped around it and made a strap for me to be able to wear it so it was like my blaster yeah. and when when she dropped me off at daycare i'd gather the kids and i'd set up the plot of the movie and i'm like okay my little sister jackie is gonna be or actually i don't even know that jackie was able to play this game but the, the little girl at daycare she's gonna be um uh she's gonna be Sindel. And we're going to try and rescue her from the the horrible Ewok monster who I don't even know what it's called still to this day. But, like, an Ewok dies in that movie. There's a giant killer spider in that movie. There's a giant Ewok character. It's terrifying. But I remember being just, like, fascinated. And the movie has this weird sound to it. Like, it's that, like vinyl you know the difference between sound yeah. when you listen to something on a vinyl versus like a cd it has that same version of it in my vhs copy and it always had the commercial breaks a little bit in between too so i grew up watching these really awkward tv commercials too yeah um but yeah. i i just that's my first connection and and so like when i think of star wars and i think i think about this movie that i used to imagine being a part of yeah know? no and you and i have been talking about this for a couple times now, uh, between with Star Wars Celebration and then uh, we brought it back up again when we were having a conversation with Kylie. I, I have it on DVD because they have a double sided copy. Yeah, that I they remember released, when that came out. Which now. I didn't get it. Like an, a fool. I didn't it, get it. It is. The resale values on those are just. It's like hundreds of yeah, dollars. It's it's terrible. So I'm just open. I went through a phase where I threw away like all my DVD cases and I don't know if I kept that one. Ooh. But I, I still have the disc. And so I'm. I, I might need to sit her down and actually force her to watch these because I don't. It's believe narrated she's seen by them. Burl Ives. Come on, yeah. it's it, you got to watch it again. Yeah. When May sticks his hand in the tree and that monster eats up to his elbow, I'm telling you, get a, get a hold of this movie. Yeah. No, I am. I'm, I'm sure you can also pirate it on the YouTube if you really have to. Sure, it's out there. Uh, my Star Wars, very similarly, as you kind of put it. Um, if I had to choose one Star Wars movie right now. The Christmas Empire. Special. Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> um, just without a doubt. I 
I will like just turn into a little kid while I'm watching Empire, mostly because of uh, mostly because of the Yoda scenes. Now there is, I just love the character of you Yoda. Yoda. Yeah, I di- I didn't love Yoda. I now I love Yoda. Before I when I was a kid growing up, I felt like Empire was the one that I liked the least because it was dark. You know, the first one was just oh, a man, good all the, around well, movie. I, I remember watching Empire for the very first time, and so you know the scene where Luke's hung upside down in the yeah. uh, Wampa, or is yeah. that what it's called? Uh, it, it, and I remember he like focused is and we're watching them with my mom at my aunt's house because my uncle had gotten them and he reaches out of his he comes down and the lightsaber starts shaking yeah. and then flicks his hand and i was like how did he do that because he didn't use the force to move exactly. anything in the last movie and i was that kid who was like plot hole like but i thought like that for me was the moment where i was like oh that was cool i wish i had the force yeah no i i mean yeah there were moments i liked in the movie obviously i was kind of like just blown away by cloud city too uh, wait so when you were a kid what was your favorite one then uh, th- what is every kid's return of favorite? the jedi of course is you love the ewoks yeah yeah, yeah it was yeah. it was all ewoks um plus luke had the green lightsaber i always thought that was the coolest lightsaber i didn't even like i i i don't need that i don't like the job of the hut sequence anymore uh as an Return adult. of the yeah, the Return of the Jedi for me is it, it, you basically you start it up as soon as Luke is heading back to to see Yoda one last time and you go from there. Miss the special edition Cantina song though. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I don't need it. So yeah, I mean, it, but think about this. This is kind of like an inside secret for people who don't get to be with us behind the scenes, but there is almost, there's pretty much one Star Wars song that I will randomly play <laughs> yeah. on repeat. And which one is that? Wub nub, yep. nub nub. I said wub nub. What the? <laughs> but yes. We saw a pretty awesome shirt at uh, Hollywood Studios last week, though. A girl, it had like Wicket's face and yeah. it said, uh, it said the yep, nub nub. Yeah. But yeah. no, I, I keep saying that's, it wrong. That is like, I will just randomly play the ewok celebration song all over and over again some I, I just love it uh return of the jedi is as much as i do not like it that much now it's still better than than prequel trilogies but um it's not bad it's, it's okay yeah, it's it, not good it's not it's it nothing can live up to the perfection that was the story of empire you know yes, it, yeah. I, I understand where as a child it doesn't seem as interesting to us but like as an adult now it's yeah. the whole like give and take between leia and han and yeah, the yeah. i love you scene is so much more powerful because when you're a kid you're like Ugh, gross but then i mean you you need that scene to set it up again in return of the jedi i remember at the end of that movie the first time i was like they killed him and my mom was like he'll come back don't worry and my mom at the beginning of return of jedi kept explaining to me we had to wait years to know that he was okay Years and my mom would emphasize that, and I'm like, All right, well, I had to wait minutes, so please. Yeah. Shh, shh. I hope you uh, slapped her and then yelled spoilers in her face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She would have thrown me down the stairs if I did that, but <laughs> well, so Marvel, let's we, we've spoken about Marvel, we've ranked our favorite Marvel movies. I'll just we'll just briefly talk about this one. It's really more of quick. a recap, yeah, from what me, we talked about. It's probably Guardians or the Avengers. One of the two in there. Like, I feel like Guardians is, exists in its own kind of universe of movies. So I, I like that one. And I would say The Avengers is my other favorite. And if you missed uh, when we talked about it in the rankings, um, my favorite Marvel movie is and still and will probably always be Captain America Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier, for sure, is, is a solid, tight movie. Um, I did watch uh, Civil War recently again, and uh, that one's not holding up as well for me as it did before. I still think it's a great Marvel movie, don't get me wrong. I just don't think it should be as high on my list as it originally was. I think it, I, I was like debating it being between like the best, where I think like Winter Soldier's right up there, Avengers is right up there, Guardians, and then it's kind of like four or five. It's yeah, I, I think for me, it would be like Winter Soldier... Of Winter Soldier, Guardians, Avengers, uh, Volume Two, and then yeah. then probably Civil yeah. War. Just yeah. just roughly throwing it out. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Um, well, I have two. I have some two honorable mentions no! that are kind of Disney movies too yes. that I grew up watching that did really resonate, and I'll I'll tell why. But Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, mm-hmm. big fan of that one. That one was always probably played almost actually just as much as Mary Poppins. It was just one of those another a VHS movie. Oh, you're snapping your fingers. Did you forget one? 
No, I I didn't forget one. I don't want to interrupt you. So continue. okay, well, so anyway, like we watched this movie a lot, and I remember like this one fascinated me because when she brings all the uh, the armor to life in yeah. the end, and also I was like, this is the guy from Mary Poppins. This yes. was the first experience in a movie where I was like. This person's in another movie. I've yeah. seen another movie. And because David Tomlinson looks exactly the same in everything he's ever in, I was like, what's the dad here? What's George doing here? Like, so I, I love all the music. I love Angela Lansbury. It's just one of those, like, if you're a kid that grew up on Nick at Night, like, it was always on my grandparents. I, Murder, She Wrote was always there. Yeah. The same way, like, you know, it Get Smart, stuff like that. And um, I, my grandparents, actually, one of the beds in one of the spare rooms had a knob that you could spin off. So I like mm. took the knob off and used to run around with me. She'd be like, why do you have this? I'm like, because you got to tap it and twist it. And then we travel on the bed and they're like, I think you're something wrong with you. That's, that's pretty much well, my true. family's favorite thing to say to me. But, um, loved, love, love that one. Do you want yeah. to say yours? Cause I got, I got one more. But well, the only thing on. we really missed an opportunity to play the child catcher clip. Oh man, I didn't even put Chitty Bang Bang on my list either, and it should be. Yeah. Okay, Chitty Bang Bang is an honorable mention for me too because that's the other Dick Van Dyke thing we watched all the time. Like, never questioning why his children were so exceedingly British and he was not. And here's a clip from it. Oh, you're not doing that? Children! <laughs> Somebody tagged me on Twitter in a thing of that recently. It's perfect. Um, for honorable honorable mentions, uh, you're I believe. My li- <laughs> um, uh, mine does not fit in with this season, but you're asking like any other ones that you'd want to mention. Something that emotionally and, resonates with you, you know? Yeah, and uh, mine for me, it, which I could say is, it might even be my favorite movie of all time, really thinking about that. Well, that's gonna, that's my other question. I do have what's your oh, favorite movie. So okay, I'll, I'll hold yeah, off on that, that one then. Um, is this time for me to list off some of the other randos? Well, okay, let me do my other one just because okay, it, it is a you Disney did. movie too. Um, with Swiss Family Robinson. Yeah. And I have an emotional attachment, so I understand that attraction made it on a list of worst attractions here recently. But if you're a fan of that movie, that treehouse is brilliant. And yeah. when I was a kid and we used to come to Disney World, I was like, I'm in a movie. And I've, I've discussed about how I love Universal Studios because it's transportive. It yeah. brings you into a movie. Very last action hero-esque. And um, it, it, it just... I always thought this was a really cool adventure movie, and it's definitely in that old style of Disney adventure films. You know, like Walt yeah. was still alive when this came yep. out. Yep. Yeah, because it was the early yep. 60s, right? And um, it, I remember being really confused as a kid, though, when that little girl shows up and she's a, like a boy, but then she's, a, she's actually a girl. And then I remember the zebra and the mud, and then I thought it was all cool. They fight the pirates at the yeah. end. Like, it was just one of those movies that, and also when they we made were, bombs out of coconuts. Yeah. Yeah, right? And I I just always thought that was cool. And also, like, this is pre-internet for us, too. So it was one of those movies where, like, you could go to your friends and be like, hey, have you seen this movie? And they hadn't. It's not like anybody really could, like, look it up. I mean, I guess you could go to the video store in town. But it also felt like it was this special movie because yeah. not everybody knew that movie because not everybody's family is showing them, like, these classic movies. But it was just always really cool also because I was obsessed with the movie Shaggy Dog. Um, and uh, Fred McMurray is a shaggy dog, and then he's also uh, the son in Swiss Family Robinson. And so I was a big Fred McMurray fan when I was a kid. Uh, clearly, roots of my homosexuality were coming out really early in no, my childhood. No, no, no. But I, I will just point out, even though I believe when this is being released, the worst list that you've mentioned isn't out yet, but it was mentioned also on the Disney World show uh, from this week. I could not sit in the room and like just just listen to them both bash on Swiss Family Treehouse. Uh, I I wasn't even, I I wasn't on camera or mic or anything, so I couldn't speak up for it. But uh, there is nothing quite like being a kid, watching that movie, and then seeing it inside there and who didn't ever want to live in a right that's what i'm saying their treehouse was incredible and you should have heard steve's response to when i said didn't you ever want to live in a treehouse but I, but he's not here, so I'm not going to throw him under the bus. Was you can talk to him about no that mac later. mac and cheese and chicken nuggets up there? Probably. Um, the one thing I will say uh, in terms of um, other ones that are worth mentioning, um, uh, I 
one of my favorite things about growing up was still when we had the wonderful world of Disney on every week on uh, on Sunday nights. Yeah, I remember. And, was and, that when uh, I, um, Eisner would come on and like introduce exactly. the movie? Yeah. Yes, yes. And so there's a lot of good classics from that era. Uh, uh, Mr. Boogity, if you're in the Halloween spirit. My date but, with the president's daughter. Yeah, remember the, that just, one? Just lots of good stuff. Um, and I, I think one of my favorite specials they ever did on that had to be the Muppets go to Walt Disney World, where it's this convoluted plot of uh, ever, all the Muppets are going to Kermit's uh, frog family reunion that happens to be in a swamp that's just right outside of Walt Disney World. Oh my God, I kind of remember this now. Yeah, and so it's one of the classic examples of um, of making Walt Disney World seem like it's all connected, even though it's not, so... Um, uh, Beauregard and Miss Piggy are going on all of the all of the adventurous rides, so like Star Tours and um, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. And uh, Kermit sings a duet with Raven Simone. I he have sings got it's not easy to get being green. A copy of this movie. Oh, it's it is so fantastic. And um, unfortunately, I don't. I believe it might have been released on VHS, but the only thing that has survived are are bad copies of it on YouTube. Mm. But it is still it is still very watchable. I I still watch it um, probably once a year when I need that that pick me up. It just it is so so good, and it it blends the two loves of Walt Disney World and the Muppets together. And you know, I do love other movies from a grown up era the same that I still have a fond attachment to we we mentioned some of them be, uh, before we started like I I will always love heavyweights a, a great disney movie I I will always love the mighty ducks oh um, yeah gosh i, I, I mean want it's to be. it's like mighty ducks is essentially like it's like fingernails yeah. you know what i mean like it, you, you you it's one it's ingrained in your yeah. dna almost like you you it's there but you kind of forget sometimes that you've yeah. got like i own it and i forget and sometimes i'm like i got to watch coach gordon bombay get at it again i mean and the, I, you, the list can go on sinbad in first kid there are so <laughs> many good ones okay so let's move into our next thing we're going to talk about your favorite movie but i want to say like favorite movies they don't specifically have to be disney um, and, but I do have a couple that are in that same yeah. category of like emotional resonance that maybe they're you know our favorite movies, but they had the same impact on us. So okay. you're you're going for I want you to go first because yours leads from Muppets Disney World into this one. I think. Well, I that's think. One, that's my favorite. No, this one was my favorite of all time. Yeah, favorite my, of all time. That's my what I'm absolute say. I get, one I number one, one favorite of all time. So we're not mentioning the ones that aren't aren't Disney. That are also. Do you want to say favorite of all time for the very end? Then I just no. Yeah, we'll say favorite. Okay, of all time okay. For the then very let's end. go yeah, into yeah. those honorable okay. mentions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, so for me, obviously, okay. Dennis okay. the Menace. You really have got a no. That's that's yours, right? No. Okay. okay. No. Uh, Hook. I I remember going to see this in the movie theater. You know, I was really young. This is actually one of the first movies I can remember going to see. And I remember my dad's father, who uh, passed away when I was in fourth grade. Um, he. Like, it was Christmas time, and we went to his house, and I remember he said, like, okay, kids, like, your present, uh, we're, we're all going to go to the movies, and we're going to go see Hook. And I was like, I don't I don't know what that is. And he's like, well, it's the story of Peter Pan if he grew up. And I was like, I don't know who that is. And, you know, because I would have been, like, just turned six. Um, yeah. And... Uh, so he takes me out onto the back porch because he he lived in this uh, house in downtown, uh, not downtown, but kind of in Plymouth, and it was on a lake, and it was a really clear night, and he like we point up to the stars, and he's like, okay, well he points up, and he's like, you see that star right there, and he's like, it's the second one to the right, and you like, and he explained like, and straight on to morning, that's how you get to Never Neverland, and I'm like, well, what's Never Neverland? And he's like, it's a place where you you go and you 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 know you don't you don't age, you don't you know. And he just like went through the whole explanation about how you fly with the happy thoughts and the pixie dust. And I just remember being like, this is the most incredible thing I've ever heard. I learned about Superman not long after that. So I really had an affinity for people that could fly. But but I you know, it's one of the only really strong memories I have of him. Um, because he passed away when I was so young. And um I just I love that movie. I I love, you know, I know people argue like oh it doesn't hold up or whatever like i still watch it it makes me yeah. feel the same way like i i love robin williams like he was such a light in this world to so many people that i you know it's sad it, he's not with us anymore but 
it's just the music in that movie, that John Williams score, is just it's incredible. And it, and that movie is everything that I want to be as an adult because I want to believe you can still become your child, a child again. You know what I mean? Like you can still recapture that essence of like imagination yeah. and fantasy. And yeah, and, uh, for for a kid growing up in the nineties, um, they just. You, you can't beat Hook. I have the exact same feelings about that. Yeah. I mean, not the same story, obviously. No, 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 but, but still, you know, <laughs> it's, it's got a strong, yeah. it's 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 something with us, you know what I mean? It's like that music hypnotized yep. us, I, like I, John Williams is a Pied Piper. There's another one I think that you would also agree on, too, that I think neither of us really put down before, but it just kind of came to me um, in terms of 90s kids growing up with a movie that still resonates to this day, and that's The Sandlot. Oh, yeah. It's, I it's mean, just one of those, like, yeah. It's one of those when it's on, you've got to watch it, and you got to watch it all, but you're always like, I forget how great this movie yeah. is. And it's you just, to me, like, I thought it was this really old movie. Like, this can't be, It's it takes place in, in a different time. Yeah. It's, not, it's not this, but then you find out that, no, it's actually a relatively recently new movie in the 90s. And, but it Sandlot just, is uh, like the standby me for us. That's it's got that same idea where it's like the guy telling the story about when they were kids and what they used to do and yeah. what happened when they got older, you know, and like it's got that same yeah it, less dead body. Yeah, you know? I mean, <laughs> and you know, and another one that's very similar to that is also something that is going to unfortunately be made remade with a very fantastic actor, actor Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I mean, that's Jumanji. Oh gosh, yeah. you're right. I remember going to see Jumanji in the theater too. The same. Jumanji was the first movie where I was like, do they film movies ahead of time? Because I don't know. It was the first one that got me to start thinking about how movies are made because it came out. I saw it in January of 1995 and Kirsten Dunst in the movie when Robin Williams asked what year it is. She says it's 1995. And I was like, this just came out. How do they know it's 1995? <laughs> That's it was a weird no, thing no. to click in my brain, but no, I, I like I remember being so in love with it that I had the board game. Even I used don't to like, think I ever played no, no, it. I, I had to, I borrowed it from somebody, but I remember the board game being like I got to get it. But then I got it and I was like afraid yeah. to really play it. Like, but and, it, it's it's one of those movies again. It's another one of those. There, there. The whole end scene of that movie. It was like almost those movies yeah. that were weren't afraid to be a little dark at some points too. Yeah. You know, because Peter gets and then yeah. I'm I'm mention two other ones too that are. Not to like keep this going on too long, but it's in case my sister watches it. I feel like I have to mention them because they were like so overwatched by her growing up that I feel like I have like just a general distaste for them today. And that would be my girl. Oh my god, I <laughs> love my girl. What's the kid's name? He, the, the... he doesn't have his glasses. <laughs> Don't can't even see. start. In the second My Girl movie where Jonathan uh, Brandis takes the... Uh, that's who it was, right? In the second My Girl? Um, oh, oh, no, no, sorry. Oh, we're getting a call from... I, I we're getting a call from uh, Anna Paquin right now. Yeah, she's she is furious. No, Anna Paquin is not oh, my girl. Oh, sorry. Um, gosh, I watch Veep every single week, too. Is she on, on Veep? Yeah, she's on Veep. I was like, Jamie Lee Curtis? Uh, but I forgot Jamie Lee Curtis was in this. Um, and Dan Aykroyd. Anna Schlumpsky? That's it, yep. Um, yep. Okay, Macaulay Culkin is John, Thomas, um, Thomas J. Yeah. Oh, my God. The second one was always on TV. It was one of those scenarios where the second movie is always on TV more than the first one. But Where she when, goes to Los Angeles. Yeah, and the kid, and he takes off, uh, he takes off her ring. And he goes to throw it. He pretends he throws it in the tar pit, and she starts crying because yeah. she's like, "Thomas J gave me that ring," and I'm like, oh, "I can't watch it's this." It's a callback. <laughs> um, the the other one, not to give you a, an emotional breakdown. Um, it, it wasn't um, it wasn't Jonathan Brandis though. It was uh, Austin O'Brien. Apparently, was there the you kid, go. But sorry, there you go. Um, the other one that she always watched that I absolutely hated and I will never like, Dirty Dancing. I don't. It I, was. I still way, haven't seen that. You know? It was way too inappropriate, probably for <laughs> like, for a child to I be don't watching. I like that, how but. they're dancing. You were not a fan of Footloose either. <laughs> I, I don't think I saw Footloose until I was much older. But something about those just having to be like forced to listen to them, like the the fact that anytime the song "Big Girls Don't Cry" comes on, like it's just it feels like there is a record or a chalkboard, and someone is just grading <laughs> their. Oh, hate it. Uh, hate that movie. I okay. So my sister, the one that she was watching, like repeatedly got hooked on. It's so bizarre because she's so much younger than me. Was Forrest Gump, 
And she used to make us reenact scenes from the movie because she'd be like, okay, you're going to be forced. I'm going to be Jenny. And we're going to, please, God, make us a bird. Fly far, far away. She used to like throw rocks at me and be like, get out of here. And, you know, and be like, and then she'd, she'd jump from character to character because then she'd go, run, Forrest, run. And she'd be like, now this is when you run. And like, it was just such a weird movie for her to hook into, but I'm just praying that she didn't take off all her clothes, sit with the guitar, and be like, "Now you're gonna watch me play." <laughs> oh God, no! Thank um, God. That's like, yeah. Um, okay, I haven't. I have a. I've, I've got more. I have to mention too. Gremlins. We had yeah. this recorded from TV, so it still has all the commercials in it, and it was always McDonald's advertisements for Dick Tracy. So it was really bizarre Folgers commercials and Dick Tracy advertisements, but also. Um, my aunt had the VHS for this, so every time we slept over my aunt's, which, which felt like once a week, we always watched this movie. And I did not understand that movies were a fixed thing. Yeah. I thought they could change. So every time it gets to the end of that movie, okay, first of all, when Billy gets to the YMCA and Spike's hiding in the thing, and he goes to open it, and Billy falls back, and then Spike slashes him across the chest, I used to have to be like close my eyes and like cover yeah. my ears and rock back and forth because I hated that noise. And then in the department store where he's throwing the blades – the uh, saw blades at him or then he shows up with a chainsaw and the bat I always thought like well this is the time I watch this and Billy's gonna be dead and I can't handle this but he lived yeah but but I do my brother and I used to watch that movie all the time like I that's my favorite Christmas movie that is actually one of two movies that I can remember specifically doing this because again you mentioned the the internet era before and um the, this and then also Spaceballs were two movies that I saw like late at night on TBS when I was probably staying up too late on a weekend. Shouldn't have been that then I had to like run and find the TV guide yeah. to look <laughs> Figure up to it see out what, what it was. It was. Yeah. So that way then we could go and rent the movie. Yeah. And and a lot of times that did not work out because I would, you know, this was this was back when parents were still good parents. When you could say, I saw this movie on TV. Well, Can't they had them rent walled, it for me? The walled in the different space, too, <laughs> in the movie. Th- and, you know, you go in the movie yeah. store and they'd be like, it's on the wall you're not allowed yeah. to pick from. And and so it's like, OK, well. I, I saw this on TV, Mom. Can't you can't you let me rent space balls? Not knowing that <laughs> the language is so absolutely foul in that. But you know, that's again, that's that's back when parents were nicer. I, stay tuned was my movie I used to catch on TV, and I would always be like, "What is this movie? It's got that guy from Problem Child in it." Because I loved, I had a, re, I had a love for John Ritter that runs deep. Yeah. Like when he died, it was a rough time for me. But he, I, I just. I used to love it, and I never even understood any of the jokes in it either. I didn't understand. I was like, well, they're mice now. I didn't understand it was like Tom and Jerry, and I didn't understand when he jumps into the Three's Company scene. Yeah. I get it now as an adult. That's another movie I had in my hands once, set back down. You can't find it. It's like out of print now. And I will find it someday you will. on DVD. Um, but I would be remiss if I did not mention E.T., Mm, yes. Um, I watch that. We watch that a lot, and it just has a weird – like my parents are divorced, and – I don't think I understood that movie was about divorce when I was a kid because I always remember thinking the dad, E.T.'s, uh, E.T., Elliot's dad was the kid, the guy with the keys, the key, the, the man, yeah. he's no name in the movie, you know, um, and I just, I, I don't know. There was just something about that movie that really, like, spoke to me on this emotional level. It was so weird. It, it, the the older brother Mike in that movie reminds me of my brother Mike, and it just, it, it, it the music in that, too, again. It's like hypnotizing. You know? I'll, I'll talk more about ET when we do uh, when we do a show on movies that used to scare us as kids that now we absolutely enjoy. Oh, that's a great idea. That, for that's so yeah because that's one I'll throw I'll throw it into the ring. Jeez, <laughs> good lord. Um, we should be forced to like watch them all before ahead of time to be like, are they still scary? No, they're not. That's the that's the thing. I'll watch they're that not. Ewok movie. <laughs> there we go. We already yeah. have three. Um, I no, I I love E. T. too, and um, you the know, second uni- one, yeah. E- <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> E. T. Also, uh, Universal was they put out a lot of good stuff. Uh, uh, Back to the two, Future. Come yeah, on. Well, two two animated ones too that I feel like we have to mention. But we don't have to talk about them. Just mention it. An American Tale. As oh yeah, well as yep. the Land Before Time. Oh god, uh, the, my my the claim in my family is that that's actually the first movie I ever saw in the movie theater. Wow! And I remember watching it. I remember that is a movie too. That like that's an emotional movie. Like when the when the land splits apart and yeah. they're separated, and and then I always remember the fight they have with like Sarah toward the end, and then the the raptor or the raptor the Tyrannosaurus comes in, and that was that was before they yeah. were all musicals too, because that was a straight up just a movie. 
Yeah, no, this was um, this uh, for those of you who don't know anything about it. Don Bluth was an animator at Disney, um, who I believe his last movie was actually Fox and the Hound, and then he Ugh. split off from Disney, opened up his own animation company um, as part of uh, Universal, and so that's when you get stuff like Land Before Time, an American Tale, uh, Rockadoodle. Um, oh my gosh, and, I remember Rockadoodle. Uh, All Dogs Go to Heaven. Uh, a lot of these ones that. You know, they were almost almost the same quality as Disney because they were made by a person who used to be a Disney animator. Yeah. They just weren't quite there a hundred percent of the way, but uh still hold up emotionally. I'm surprised you did not bring up Hocus Pocus in any of this. Oh, okay, so Hocus Pocus, yeah, I probably should have because it's a movie to me like I remember the my grandparents they had cable, so I was able to like my uncle had bought us the Disney channel there for that because he was still living with my yeah. grandparents at the time. And um it, I remember the specials on like how they made – so the one scene in particular that always gets me in Hocus Pocus is when Max and Winifred meet for the first time and she does the green lightning out of her hands and throws them up yeah. against the wall. And there was a whole making of segment on the Disney Channel. I was like, I've got to see this movie. And Hocus Pocus was like – it was a really hard movie for me to find. I didn't get to see it in the theater. and mm. like I don't remember when I first saw it, but it is one of those movies that – it is there with me. I, I, you're right. I should. That's the hard part. I was like writing this, and I'm like, uh, I'm glad you brought up Land Before Time though, too, because that is a movie too. Like, I, anytime I see a giant leaf, I'm like, little foot. Yeah. You know, like it. That's that's a movie like. Uh, that's a movie like when they look at the DNA of your life, what movies are going to be in there. And like Land Before Time yeah. will definitely be in my, well, my childhood movie. Should that lead on to our all time favorites? Um. Uh, yes, or, I do want to throw okay. out a, to Jurassic Park. Uh, I remember yeah. seeing that in the theater. Obviously, big impact on me. We've spoken about that. Both of us have uh, when Jurassic World came out and stuff like that. Back to the Future was also a really big one in my family. Yet it was a oddly enough, we never owned any of them. Like, but it was always like I do whatever I could to find it. Yeah, you know. Um, and yeah, so with that. Let's say our favorites, but I feel like I'm, you're going to be disappointed with mine. So. I, I could be disappointed with yours. Um, my You already know mine because I had to ask about it. Um, well, I, I feel like some of the biggest memories you can ever have that really stay with you throughout any year are, are holiday-related stuff. Like, I remember watching all the great holiday specials growing up as a kid, oh, whether it was... Off. Not even that, not even that. Whether it was um, in Halloween, uh, there was this old cartoon they used to do that was like buttons and rusty and then of course they had cartoon versions of uh raggedy ann and andy stuff oh, like yeah, that yeah. and so there's like and that's the stuff that my parents taped mm -hmm. on the vhs tapes growing up off the tv it was all these holiday specials and um and then you know the especially for christmas too and then you start adding that on by seeing like home alone for the first time as a kid and oh, being yeah. blown away yeah. and that is why i still if that is one of the christmas movies that i cannot get through the holiday season without yeah, watching it's, it's an um, essential in my family the first one for sure you have to watch that lost in new york eh, maybe not i so saw much, it in the but... movie theater my aunt my aunt and her best friend took me to go see it when i was a kid and i remember being like <gasps> This is so cool. I get to go to this theater and see this movie. Yep. But there is one Christmas movie in particular that I will watch regardless of what time of the year it is, if it just happens to be on, if I just get sparked in the mood. And that, of course, is Tired. The Muppet Christmas Carol. Oh, yeah. It's just, it is the perfect Muppet movie. In every way, shape, and form. I remember you. Do you remember when you were like younger and this was you were still kind of allowed to do this in schools? They would show you the movie like, oh, Christmas break's coming up. We're gonna watch a movie as a class together. If you were like really good and yeah. everyone did well on their grades, it was like the incentive. I remember when they showed us Muppet Christmas Carol. Like I yeah. remember like sitting in school and watching that movie. You know, I have very very vivid memory of that. Yeah, no, I just I remember I remember my mom taking I believe my sister and I to. Uh, to the Clearview Mall cinemas to see it. And I can, like, I just have the memory of standing in the lobby, seeing the poster on the wall. And that was the first Muppet movie I ever got to see in theaters. And it might, I mean, I, of course, grew up with Muppet Babies. So that was a big part Muppet of it. Babies. And um, I'm sure, you know, I, I saw Muppets go to Walt Disney World. I don't know if I saw the other Muppet movies beyond that. Um, so that was, like, my first real thing. And yeah. it, it I am essentially a Muppet of a human now, so <laughs> that's 
that is like that is one of the things that has stuck through with me. And then Sweet getting ups. to see Muppet Treasure Island. Let's not bring that back up. I'm still <laughs> angry about that. Um, but no, it's that it's like one of those things. The movie has transcended be off the screen and has become just like the these characters as a whole are just so important to me. Like the yeah. the only thing I can really classify it to is how I feel about Disney movies. It's like Disney and Muppets. They're they're right there together. Yeah. It's it's just brilliant. And you know what? Muppets, I, I could love Muppets more than Disney. I really could. I understand what you're saying, too. Like, I know this is really cheesy to say, and I don't ever say it's one of my favorite movies, but I've definitely seen this movie a lot. And, you know, I mean, like Ghostbusters when I was a kid, page I was Master. really, really into Ghostbusters. No, but this does tie into the Page Master. It's really weird that you said that. The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers original movie, you had to rent the Page Master in order to see the trailer for it. <laughs> that was advertised in the commercial for when it came out on VHS. So, but I... I watched that movie to the point where, like, I saw the VHS a couple of years back, like the one that we had, yeah. and it had been white. Like, it was so the the color had faded from it so much, and you know, and I love Power Rangers, and it it just is one of those movies that, like, I know it's not a good movie, but it's like a movie where I feel like I'm you know ten yeah. years old watching this movie. Like, I was rewarded at the end of the summer, so I like. It is in one of my favorite movie categories, but it's solely because of such an emotional connection to it. And I love that it's like this time capsule of the 90s. However, that is not the two movies I'm going to talk <sighs> about here. Um, mine are both newer movies, too. Um, <sighs> the Moulin Rouge, just called Moulin Rouge, not The Moulin Rouge, is one of my favorite movies. I, I've been saying it's my favorite movie. I remember being... This movie came out when I was 15 years old. And I remember... And I, I know it's newer and it hasn't been with me as long, but... It, I sat in the movie theater and like that was a movie where I was like the, the creation of this movie just dumbfounded me. Like I remember being feeling the emotional manipulation it went through in the movie. Like when you're supposed to be excited and like you know you're learning about the Moulin Rouge and you're, it's all these weird visuals and it's really really fast paced editing and it's just insanity. And no other Baz Luhrmann project has ever spoken to me like this either I, I was like maybe i like baz lerman but i don't think that's the case yeah, uh, australia didn't speak Gosh, to you like that they shoot the kangaroo in the beginning she's like oh like it's just a weird weird movie but you know what the guy's got his own look you know but there's just something about the colors in this movie the saturation in the movie the music in this movie the acting in the movie the style of the movie the way it takes the shifts like it was a movie that i was like i sat there and watched and i was like i want to go learn how these are made mm. and so like that holds a really hard, uh, special place in in my heart um uh the the spider-man one i really enjoy for that a uh, very similar reason but it's not in my favorite but it is up there there's this other movie called life as a house have you seen it? Um, I don't believe so. Okay, this movie, unfortunately, has Hayden Christensen in it. It's the movie, the reason why he was ever allowed to be in any movie ever again. And I I saw this when I was like 15 or 16, and it it's Kevin Kline. Um, I think Robin Wright's maybe in it, maybe not. Ian Somerhalder's in it. Um, uh, who's that girl that everyone likes? Jenna? Um, uh, whatever her name is. Jenna uh, Elfman? No. no. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. It's Kristen Scott Thomas. I always get her mixed up. But Kevin Klein, Kristen Scott Thomas, Hayden Christian, Jenna Malone. Oh. Mary Steenburgen yeah. is in it. Um, but yeah, it's got Scott Bakula, too. You can never go wrong with the Bakula. It was a movie where like I cried so hard, but it was like one of those where I'm like, I'm going to change my life when I'm done with this type of a movie that I always... Every time I watch it, I fe it changes what I feel like inside, and not in a temporary way. Like it is a very, and not like cheesy, inspiring, I guess. But it's just the way it was put together spoke to me so well. I I don't know. Feels it, it sounds a lot like the first time that I watched uh, the Chevy Chase JTT classic, Man of the House. Oh yeah, with the uh, I had a goat once named Butthead. <laughs> I know that movie. I saw that in the theater too. You know what else sucks though? Uh, we didn't bring up Casper. Uh, yeah, we talked about that um, before we started, and I mean that that was one that was like cool when we were kids. But it it was running like all last year on HBO. Is it not the Halloween up as well? season? Oh, it is so terrible. I and I feel bad because I like Christina Ricci. I I love Bill Pullman and Devin Sawa. And it's funny. And it was like when we were kids, we were like, ah, it's funny. The animation is so cool. The ghosts look so cool. There was a TV show it's afterwards so too. There was a cartoon I watched for a while. There, there was a musical. 
there was a musical. a musical. Yes, there was a Casper the Musical. You know, there were like five movies too, or something like that. Oh, there, there, was, there was a, a lot. Couple, right? There was like, a lot. Um, but yeah, I, I I feel like I should have picked a movie that was like from my childhood there that came with me all the way through. It's fine. So, I, I I do think E.T. is probably up there yeah. for me, but but yeah. Anyway, those are my those are probably my two. I get it. I have a strange obsession with the Mask of Zorro. It's not a bad movie. That's a good movie. Yeah, it's okay. It's weird though. You have this weird like you're like, is it okay that I say that? Am I allowed to enjoy the Mask well, of Zorro as much as I do? Uh, uh, Catherine Zeta Jones, Antonio Banderas, Anthony Hopkins, Anthony Sir Anthony Hopkins, as the Spanish <laughs> Zorro, Carrie Elways. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 They're, they're That's all. A good one. It's stacked. It, yeah. it is stacked. Yeah. <laughs> I got to go watch a lot of movies right now. Yeah, but. We, sh- we should just wrap this up and do that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that'll do it. But I'm, you know, I'm curious, what are, the, what are the movies that have emotionally resonated with you guys who are still watching this? Like, it doesn't have to be a Disney movie. It can be a whatever. Guilty pleasure movie, too. You know what I mean? Like, I obviously said some movies here that, you know, aren't masterpieces, but I love them. Oh, you know? yeah. like once a week you bring up Space Jam. I do bring up Space Jam quite a bit. I saw that in the movie theater <laughs> an unusual amount of times. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, these are movies when I'm in a nursing home. I'm hoping that, if nothing else, they've sent along those movies for me to watch. So, do you have nursing home movies that you hope to watch, too? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you've given me the list already. I'm talking to the world out there. Oh. So, oh. Um, so, yeah, anyway. Um, so let us know in the comments, tweet at us, Dizpop Show, all that, that fun stuff. And I think that is going to do it. So, uh, thank you, Craig, for having this discussion with me. Thank you. And, uh, thank you guys for listening and watching. And that'll do it for this episode of Dizpop. Pop.